Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on how to optimize your VRChat avatars for Oculus Quest. So what many people do to port their avatars to Quest is they just take their PC avatar, you change some of the shaders a bit so it's compatible with the Quest, and just upload it as is. Now that might be fine for some avatars, but the issue with this, um, the way of doing this is that if your avatar tends to be above a certain threshold or have a certain number of materials, polygons, or meshes, um, it might slow down the game for a lot of people since the Quest uses a mobile processor. And, well, it's not great playing the game at 30, 45 FPS in VR. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of, uh, makes it kind of sick. It's, uh, it's a weird feeling. So, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you an easy way to take m most of the avatars you have and at least get them running on the Quest and looking somewhat reasonably nice. Uh, in a lot of ways, sometimes you can't even tell the differences. So, the diff the, what Quest requires to be considered at the very least poor, which we're going to aim for for reasons I'll get into later, is you need to be at least under 10,000 polygons, which right now you'll see we're at 22,000, 21,000, 22,000 over here, with our uh, with our good buddy Rex from Xenoblade 2. We're using him as an example. Um, you need to be under uh, three or so uh, materials, which preferably you should have one. But right now you'll see Rex, he has um, uh, he has one for his face, he has another one for his eye, he has some for his hair, he's got some for his body. Um, I'm not sure if he has any more. I think he might have some for like uh, the metal stuff, maybe. But yeah, the sum for the windows, quite a few anyway, so we're going to uh, limit that down. And you also want everything to be, I think it's under three meshes, and right now we're obviously way above that limit with how many different meshes Rex has, so we're going to combine that all into one. So let's start out with that. So the easiest way to get him down to one mesh, um, you can just do the, the way of, you know, pressing A to highlight everything and hitting Control J to join together. But um, that's uh, key presses to memorize. And key presses are annoying, so if we can go back here, there we go. We're just going to use the Cat's Blender plugin, which if you don't have this installed, uh, you should install this right away, because it makes making VR shot avatars so much easier. Uh, just hit the big old fix model button up there, and that should just combine everything right away. Usually fixes some of the bones, it kind of just uh, fixes half the broken things about avatars. Uh, while I'm here, also, uh, if you haven't hit this button, uh, this press that button. It, it fixes the way they walk. It's it's really useful, uh, especially for full body. Just makes them look less awkward. So now that you have everything as one mesh, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all the materials. So here you see all the different materials we have. It's uh quite a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to go over to the optimization tab, which should be over here. Cool. So you'll see a list of all the materials we have here. Just make sure to select all of them. And then we'll just hit Save Atlas 2. So Atlas thing, what it does is it takes all the different textures and it puts it into one big texture file instead of a bunch of separate ones, which cuts down on the amount of draw calls that the model needs since it's only drawing from one file instead of a couple of them, which makes things way easier. So I already have one for Rex in his folder, so I'm just going to save it to the desktop for uh, simplicity. And uh, give that a minute. It takes a bit. So now you'll see that we just click on him. One big material atlas. We go over to UV editing. Uh, should be, there we go. So you'll see that we just have one big file with all of the uh, textures in it. All right, next thing is the um, what I believe to be the hardest part of the procedure. And that's getting him down to underneath 10,000 polygons. So the thing with polygons is they really don't have a significant impact on frame rate, really, when you're at least under, like, a reasonable threshold. Like, if, if you're not, like, over, like, 50,000, you're something ridiculous like that, you should be fine. But Quest still prefers that you're under 10,000 anyway. So you'll see I'm um, 20, uh, 22,000 over here, which is honestly fine for frame rate's sake. But if you're in the poor, if, if you're in very poor, which is above 10,000 polygons, uh, people will need to show your avatar by highlighting you and then hitting show avatar if they don't have it set to poor, which... Well, I mean, like... They, um, uh, well, they can't even set it to poor. You can't set it to very poor, so they'll have it set to poor. So people need to manually show you, which is really annoying, especially if you, if you have an avatar that's supposed to, you know, catch them by surprise, which is like half of them. 
So you're going to want it to be under 10k, but if you can't, um, just follow the steps I'm doing and at least get it under like 30k if you can, just to help out on people's frames. But yeah, so first what we're going to do is we're going to choose the parts that we want to keep the same. So if you know what a shape key is, it's just what, um, uh, you know, it, it's just a way that you move the model, like um, just different like poses it has built into it without moving the bones. So you see we have a shape key for all the eyebrows, we got shape keys for the mouth. We got shape keys for the, uh, there should be some for the eyes around here somewhere. There we go. So when you lower the model's poly count or decimate it, it gets rid of all of those because now you have a bunch of new polygons and it doesn't really know how to move those and it's very weird. So we're going to keep the face the same. We're not going to decimate it because if you decimate it, it's going to look, it's got, you're going to have to make the shape keys all over again. And it's annoying and his face is going to look like garbage. The other thing we're going to keep the same is I like keeping the hands because the thing with the hands is they don't tend to decimate well over here you'll see that there's an option for save fingers it barely works um, I don't recommend using it uh, I'd recommend just uh, manually telling it hey don't decimate the hands I like the hands so here's what we're gonna do so you could just uh, you know go over to the face in the edit mode and select everything you want to keep the same but that's hard so we're going to go over UV, UV editing right here, and we're going to turn on the sync mode, or whatever it's called. So now what it does is if we select anything here, it'll also select it in the editing tab. So we're just going to select this whole face, because we want to keep the face the same. And there we go, that's his face selected. Um, I could select the eyebrows too, or everything, but uh, I honestly don't care enough. So the hands, those are a bit harder since those aren't actually like they're hard to find here. Like I don't want to sift through this garbage. We're just going to go back into edit mode. We're going to make it see through so we can select polys that aren't just directly in front of us. And we're just going to select the whole hand. I don't care what's behind it. Just select the whole hand. Go over here. Select the other hand. Uh, we got a bit of gunk in there. Let's just uh, get rid of that. Uh, it's, it's fine. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just as long as you got the fingers saved. We're going to select all of this. By the way, the select key is B, if you didn't know that. And if you hold down shift, well, um, well like right before you let go of it, it'll get rid of polys or vertexes instead of adding them. So we'll just get rid of all those. So now we have the hands and the face selected. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to create a new material to assign them to temporarily. So all you got to do is just hit the plus button over here. Um, Usually it won't make his entire avatar white, but just the way that this is uh, working, just ignore that. So just hit assign to the new material. Uh, usually that'll just make, like the rest of his body will have color and everything, but just the face and the hands will be white, which is what you want. But if the whole avatar turns white, just go over to this one and uh, is there like a remove tab or something? No, there isn't. Uh, I'm just going to... Uh, Highlight the whole body, we'll go over here, we'll hit deselect, and we'll just uh, assign to there. There we go. So now you'll see that the hands are white, aside from a few, it, it, that's fine, and the face is white, because those are the two things we want to keep the same. So now what we got to do is we'll just go over into the decimation tab. Go over to custom, since that's the easiest one. Hit separate by material. So what I'll do is since we created a new material, now we have two meshes. One for the face and hands, and one for everything else. So we're going to go over to the Meshes tab, and we're going to select the one that we don't want to change. So that's going to be the Atlas, since that's the, you know, this is the Atlas we did earlier. So this is the one that's going to stay. So we're going to add that. We're going to, I tend to just do it down to 9,999. I don't know why. Maybe just in case I need to, like, change, like, add, like, a, a point or something. Like, it doesn't put it over, but that's what I do. Don't tick save fingers since the fingers are already saved by us. We'll do quick decimation. And this model cannot be decimated down to 9,999. Oh, I know what the issue is. It's um, Don't click on the atlas. Uh, all right, I'm going to splice this in. Sorry, I'm back. Um, I just had an issue with... Uh, I Don't actually select the atlas one. Select the material one. So just hit material because we're going to want to whitelist this one. So we're going to just do quick decimation. And there we go. You might notice he's just a, he looks a tiny bit crustier. But if we get rid of that second material we did. Hey, he looks 
almost perfect, honestly. Um, aside from a few things looking lower poly, poly, he really doesn't look too bad. We go over to the shape keys. He can still raise his eyebrows. He can still smile. He can still shout and all of that, all of that goodness. So now we have an optimized avatar. And again, if uh, your avatar, um, uh, if you select all those things and that's actually above 10,000, which might happen for some, you know, really high avatars, just try to get it to a reasonable number. Um, it, it's honestly fine if you can't get it down to 10k, but that's preferable. And just export this, put it into VR chat, and it will into Unity. And, you know, most people use the same shader for everything anyway, standard or tunelet, so you can just set the one big atlas to that. And that's really it. That's how you optimize an avatar for Oculus Quest and not kill everyone's frame rates and actually be optimized for the system. Hope this helps you out, and I'll see you.